kind of a job description for whatever position you happen to be in, right? It tells you what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. And you shouldn't be doing things that aren't your job, and you should be doing things that are your job. And the problem that we've got right now with the government is they aren't doing things they should be doing, and they should be do and they are doing things they shouldn't be doing. So that needs to get sorted out. If you call all that progressive, I'm just fine with that. That's your definition. Uh, it is my definition because basically it's moving on from what <laughs> what we have. It's it's the status quo. Um, and and yeah, it's probably not. Okay, maybe maybe a way to define it better would be that you're not a um, a an, an issue progressive, a progressive issues, but more of a a pragmatic progressive. A pragmatic I progressive. Know. I like that. Can I, there you go. Can I use I don't that know. term? Yeah, sure. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, so I so, think um, I, th- I think what good, for, for what I'm noticing from this conversation, a progressive normally through our propagandist media uh, has been defined as a liberal mindset, mostly Democrat. Uh, they want to legislate a lot of morality. They want they want to put more legislation on top of legislation. Uh, so I think that's where because uh, because libertarians are the exact opposite. We believe in free choice. We believe in free thinkers you know you don't you know there's already a law that says don't murder so throwing a bunch of paper and and blaming a tool and blaming uh you know society and upbringing and then writing paper basically which doesn't do anything uh so i think that's where we got mixed up with the progressive label uh what you're saying is uh pragmatically progressive back to the Constitution as it was uh, uh, envisioned by our forefathers. Yeah, oh, and, and changing it, of course, if, if something comes up, because, you know, we've, we've grown a lot as society and as a country um, in the past 250 years, um, you know. So, uh, yes, exactly that. Um, and, and I think okay. it all stems, the problem stems back from your, the propagandist media you just said that, that divides us into two different, two different um, teams. One's rooting for blue and one's rooting for red. And when they have us fighting against each other and arguing amongst ourselves, they can do whatever they want when we're not paying attention. Um, so yeah. In that we agree. <laughs> okay, okay, great. <laughs> go, okay, there, there, is, <laughs> there is one thing I'd like to clarify, though, um, Mike, and that is... Joe, I sent the content of your letter to Mike. I did not send him your email address or your name. They no, were both no, yeah. redacted. It was just it was for just, your protection. Exactly. Great, it was just you. what you said. So yeah. I, I I do want to be I do want to be very clear about that. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate he said, that. And even he if does that, not know your name or your email address. And, and perfect. And the type of media that I'm trying to, I'm a little different. I don't, uh, you know, I like substance. I don't go after stuff or make stuff up. If uh, people want to listen to my show, then they listen to my show because it has substance. And I don't do that through cheap tricks and all that. Because even if it would have gotten through or, or if, if Rebecca would have, for some reason, not taken that information out, it would have gone no further. Uh, so, but she didn't. It was still, just the, it was still, just the I, content. I want to yeah. make it very clear that when... You know, and and this was I sent it to to I sent it to Mike as a discussion point. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I a good didn't one send it that. as a as a way to attack you. So Joe is no, 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 and I and I didn't take it as that. I, de- I definitely didn't. So definitely respect you. Everything is all good from both sides. So so Joe, um, so so just to make it uh, kind of as a as if, if I were one of my listeners listening to this conversation now. I, the point you're trying to make is, even though there's a status quo, even though a majority of the people know that that's bad, that we, whether it's John Cornyn or the Democrat, both of them are probably bought and paid for by mm-hmm. some corporation. Yeah, uh, John Cornyn that, has about eleven ins- billion, and Alamil has about nine billion. So yeah. instead of <laughs> in, instead of picking up libertarian candidates or independent candidates. And you even expressed in your email that there may be a, may come a time where independents will have a voice. Uh, mm-hmm. You think the lesser of two evils is the Democrat 
taking the senatorial seat away from John Cornyn, other than maybe jumping on the bandwagon with Rebecca and her cause. And, uh, you know, it's growing every year. I, I don't like to label myself as anything but a constitutionalist. The libertarians just happen to be the party right now that fits more in line with my personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm kind of watching them. But, I, but you'll ask Rebecca, when I get anybody on this show, I ask them all the same questions. And it's coming from the standpoint of a voter. And not not a, I'm not I don't feed the libertarian softballs and then go hardball with somebody else. I give them all the same hardballs. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to know what they want to say. But so you think uh, you don't think that you could uh, join uh, the the a grassroots movement? Because another thing I, I'll tell you about the Libertarian Party they don't they don't force you to labor, label your, yourself as libertarian. If that makes any sense, unless you're running for an office, but if you just like, if, but if you want to help support a libertarian candidate, we've got some good ones out there, and maybe we could be that catalyst that breaks the back of the status quo. Uh, <laughs> no, I can I, I can definitely agree with you, but why why would I want to why would I want to uh, bet on a losing horse? Well. Through, through change, and through being bold and standing up for what you believe in, and going against the grain, is kind of how this country was formed. And oh, it is, and it took men. I think men that, is, of, that is going to be the answer. What I proposed was a was a step to having at least a bipartisan um, representation for our state, and then from that being able to say. Uh, then, then people being able to start seeing, oh, maybe we can have a different view. And because there's, there would be two different parties representing us um, in the Senate, at least, um, then it might open up an, another opportunity for someone else to step in. Someone that might be right down the middle of the two, or just slightly left or right of one of the two. Um, and people say, no, I agree with them a little bit more. And it starts changing because I think a big problem in Texas is that everybody says, well, I'm Texan and I'm Republican. And that only started coming out of George Bush when he started governor. Otherwise, people were mostly Democrat. It, it, was, it was very, very strange to see the shift of, of politics. But people well, southern, you know, they southern jump on that Democrat. bandwagon and, and us proud Texans have to say, well, I'm... I'm just as good as the next guy, and I only vote the same way as he does. And, and it's going to have to take some, some clever changes <laughs> to well, get until, that, that mindset to stop. Until recently, the South was, was mostly Democrat, but the, Democrat, the Democrats of the old, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and all the way up into the 80s, uh, was more conservative than the Republicans were now. The Republicans were the liberals. And it shifted. It shifted in philosophy just in the last twenty five, thirty years. So, mm -hmm. so you're right. Texas was mostly Democrat, but it wasn't the de Democratic Party of today. It was the Democrat, no, the Democratic Party of your. I mean, that all changed with Lyndon Johnson, and it started downhill from there, in my opinion. <laughs> and then, well, and then the catalyst, of course, was Jimmy Carter. Uh, but uh, I guess what gets me. As an outsider looking in, is you you believe that Miss Paddock is enough of a threat to take away votes from a Democrat, and I think she'd take more votes away from Republicans personally. But anyway, she's so much of a threat that she can affect the outcome of the election. She just can't win it. Yes. So what's what would get it to the point where she would win it? <laughs> I guess that eleven billion dollars that John Cornyn is, is receiving, or the nine billion that uh, David Alamil is receiving. I, I so, mean, I don't know. I, 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 I hate to think that money wins elections because I think you were just talking about uh, Ms. Paddock is that um, corporations don't deserve a vote. They're they're not people, even though our Supreme Court seems to think so. Um, I am a person, and I deserve my vote to be heard, and not someone with more money that makes a better salary than a school teacher. You know, um, so I don't. I, I can't answer that question. I I wish I could say, oh, it would just be a matter of me going on knocking on my neighbors, and then you knocking on your neighbors, and then next person knocking on their their neighbors' doors, and then 
letting people talk, but people get so defensive about their red team or their blue team. Well, I tell you what, we got to cut for a commercial, uh, and when we get back, we'll discuss this further. You want to stick around? Sure, yeah. All righty. Uh, how it works here, Joe, is we're all in the same channel, so you just kind of have to meet your phone and enjoy the commercials. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that for you. <laughs> All right, we're on the phone with Rebecca Paddock, the U.S. Uh, senatorial candidate for uh, the great state of Texas, and Joe, who called in and wants to talk about, uh, uh, geez, oh, Pete, who's talking about uh, her run for... John Cornyn's seat and how maybe her not running would help out. And we're gonna just we're gonna explore that some more when we get back. I'm Mike Allen. This is the Armed Radio Global Network, and you are on the air. Ready to boost your professional image and show your dedication to your career? iCarryAlls.com is your source for customized business cases for iPad, iPad Mini, MacBook, Galaxy tablets, and other devices. We stock a huge number of genuine leather portfolios, pouch cases, business tote bags, and more. If you don't see the style you like, the iCarryAlls design team can help you design the perfect case for your needs. Express International Shipping is available. Get organized today with a leather case that works as hard as you do. Visit iCarryAlls.com. Savino Wine Preservation System is wine preservation glassware. Savino is an easy-to-use wine preservation system that allows you to enjoy your favorite wines anytime without waiting for an occasion. Open any bottle with confidence, knowing that you can enjoy the full original flavor of Tuesday's wine on Saturday. For more information, visit us at www.savinowine.com. Today's wine, tomorrow. Say goodbye to payroll hassles with professional services from KNL Payroll Services. Now you can trust your payroll is in good hands. There's nothing better than personal attention from a trusted advisor who knows your business. Get more for your money with KNL Payroll Services. Call today at 888-979-6660 for honest savings on payroll services. That's KNL Payroll Services. Route 106 Motors is the home of fine pre-owned vehicles. Experience a no-pressure sale with a family-friendly atmosphere. Route 106 Motors has been practicing the same simple philosophy of low prices for over a decade, and it has brought us great success. Recently, while other dealers are closing their doors, Route 106 Motors is expanding. We are a wholesale dealer, and we own the property and pay cash for all the vehicles. This allows us to sell to the consumer for a lot less than the average dealership. We are a high-volume, small-profit dealer, and we pass the savings on to you. New changes have been made at Route 106 Motors. Stop by and check out our brand-new building. Route 106 Motors, located at 569 West Street. Check our website at Route106Motors.com and be sure to like us on Facebook to find out about all the latest deals and savings opportunities. Route106Motors.com We love your dogs and kitties. We love them, yes we do. So when you want to give a gift, a cake or treat or two, PamperedPawGifts.com is the place for you. Yes, PamperedPawGifts.com is the place for you. All right, welcome back to the show. We're going to get right to it. Big thanks to our sponsors. I've been plugging them all night. CreativeMarketing.com. Go to Creative-MKTG.com. Also, Sutherland Party Reynolds. And I just got a poke from Matt Hazley from Straight Talk on Matt Hazley every Friday night. Cocoa Beach, Florida. So if you're in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and you want to party, call 321-302-9035. Get all your party needs together. That way you can uh, throw down. All right, we're back with uh, senatorial candidate Rebecca Paddock and Joe, who teaches high school and uh, has some views on on uh, how our elections are going here. We've established that 
Miss Paddock is a threat, enough so that uh, it could cost one or the other uh, candidates a sure thing.